Good, good morning, church family. Good morning. Those looking in on Facebook, page, whatever, virtual, we just thanking God this morning yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. for all his handful blessings that he has stored upon us. I come this morning and God to put, put on my heart to talk to everyone even within myself. I'm beginning now as I get older and older and get closer and closer to God. That is about God with the inner me. I don't care what religion I'm in or, or what happened. Or people talk about me, put me down. Life is life. And we we'll never see joy until you realize that it's what's in you. And when you honest to God and yourself, then you live a much better and richer life. See, people think that if I go to this religion, if I do this and I do that, this is going to change life. But the Bible says, uh, only, uh, only one that's perfect is Jesus Christ. And people are going to say things and do things, and we get mad, but don't leave God. Don't leave God. I'm not talking about the church, but don't leave God, whatever you do. God left, told me to tell you this this morning. He kind of said, when these bubbles inside of you, woo, so much. Then I know what he said. Every day, new mercies that he came to you. And we thank God for this. Our scripture this morning is Proverbs, as Pastor told us, about wisdom. And so we get wisdom about anything. We like in the darkness. Our scripture, Proverbs 17, verses 1 to 15. I like it that we've been in wisdom because God is steadily teaching. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifice with strife. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tried the heart. A wicked, wicked daughter give it heave to false lips and a liar Give ear to a naughty tongue. Whosoever marked the poor reproach his maker, and he that is glad at commonness should not be unpunished. Children, children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their father. Excellent speak become not a fool, but less do lying tongue a prince. A gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that has it. Whichsoever it turneth it prosper. He that covered a transgression seeketh love, but he that repented a matter separates for every friend. Spread for every friend. A reproach in the more to a wise man than a hundred strikes into a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger should be sinned against him. Let a bird robbed of her rip meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whosoever rewarded evil or good, even should not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is that when one let it out water, therefore leave off attention before it be mattered with. He that justified the wicked and he that condemned the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Yeah. May God have a blessing on the reading of his word. Amen. Let's think of Friday in our heart. Father God, once again, we come with thankful hearts. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for this journey that you have sent us on. Father God, we know that every day is not rosy. That some days we're going to have ups and downs. Everybody's not going to agree with us and see things our way. But, Father God, we know if we just please you, the maker, Father God, the creator of heaven and earth, then we know that we can rest in peace and have joy within, deep within our heart. We thank you, Father God, for this Day, we thank that you woke up us up in our right mind and we was able to come out to the house of the Lord one more time to give you all the praise and the glory. And the psalmist said, if we had a thousand tongues, we, could, uh, 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 we still couldn't thank you enough. As I blessing that ran over and over day by day, even though, Father God, we are not justified for these blessings, you have been good to us. We thank you for this man of God and his companion. We thank you for our church family as we come together in unity, Father God. We don't always agree. 
Sometimes we put each other down. But at the end of the day, Father God, you are still in charge. And the greatest commandment you said you gave to us is that we love one another. That's the greatest and the most fulfilling commandment is that our love continue to grow up here in God's will. Because we know that we are not always going to agree. But if we just put it in the master's hand, we know everything's going to be all right. And yes, Father God, we listen for a word from heaven today because there is a word from you. You forever speak it into our heart. So speak to this man of God to whom you have called and ordained, Father God, for this purpose, that he may feed us the bread of life so we will walk no more. Father God, these and all have a blessed rest in our son Jesus' name. For the sake do we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all mind if we have some old, some old school. I'm gonna come out here with you. Bit of song that my granny used to sing. Fellas, take me to B flat. Go to my kid. But there's a song that my granny used to sing. And I remember being in church with my granny. She, she was filled with, with the Holy Ghost. And what she would do is, she would jump up when it got good to her. She'd be like, Pastor, I got a song on my heart. And one of the songs that she used to sing, she'd say, I love to praise him. I love to praise him.
a lot of money. Yeah, hallelujah. Stay right there. Hallelujah. Stay right there. Hallelujah. Stay right there. Hallelujah. I stay right there. Hallelujah. He brought you over. Hallelujah. He brought you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That witness ain't worthy, ain't worthy, anybody know he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all sound real good. Y'all sound real good. Hallelujah. So I got a reason to praise God. She said, I still got a roof over my head. So I still got a reason to praise God. She said, my children are doing fine. So I still got a reason to praise God. So if you got a reason to praise God on this morning, I need to help us say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody said he's been too good to be, said he's been too kind to be. Hallelujah. I got food, I can eat, I got a roof over my head. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For keeping me in my right mind. Thank you, Jesus. You got a hand clap of praise. It sounds like y'all won't let that thing go. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Good God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you better leave it alone. Clap of praise. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Somebody say he's worthy. Come on, somebody say he's worthy. Listen, this next song, I've been singing it since I was young. And they say he's able. 
song says he's able. And, and, and the thing about this song, growing up, quick little story, growing up, being young, singing it, I used to shout all on the pews. Used to have everybody shouting and crying. At a young age, I didn't really know what was going on. Really didn't, really didn't know about what I was singing about. And the thing was, I felt like I was doing something because I was so young. And everybody was like, well, you anointed. Boy, you got it. You don't know where God's going to take you. So at that time, I had a big head. And I let it get the best of me. And now, now that I'm older, I understand what I'm singing about. And, and what I realized that when I was younger, I was saying, shout to church in. And, and, and I still go home numb. I still go home broken. I was still saying and sin. I was still saying and slide. And the, the thing about it was, it was a point to where depression got me down. Well, I was ready to give up on everything. I said, God, I can't do it. Because how can I say to your people when they get it, I still don't. Tears, I go home still crying, still broken. Nobody can help me. Still going home, still sinning, still sensing, still doing everything but the right thing. And I'm not acting like I got it all right now. But I'm trying to tell you, God is most definitely working on me. And what I can tell you on this morning, like I said, I was ready to give up. And, he, and God said, no, I don't want you to give up. He said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to credit. I'm going to give you a clean heart. And I'm going to renew the right spirit in you. And on this day, I can tell you that God is able to turn any situation around. God is able to touch your mind. God is able to touch your heart when you don't even know how to love right. I just see the few witnesses to say God is able because he was able to save a wretch like me and I can stand here in front of you and tell you that God's been too good to me he's been too kind to me even when I don't deserve it God is still able even when my family don't deserve it God is still able even when my friends don't deserve it God is still able
with your healing. Cause he won't show your
Come on, come on. Come on, let's put those hands together. How many of us believe that Monica this morning? He is able. Come on, the fact that you still here lets us know that he's able. The fact that you still able to move lets us know that he's able. Come on, all that we've been through, some folks have lost their mind, some people have took themselves out, but we simply suggest to you this morning that your appearance reminds us that he is He's able to do what he said he's going to do. That he's going to fulfill every promise to you. But here's, here's the part we got to play. Don't you give up on God. Because he won't. He won't give up on you. It may get rough, but he ain't going to give up on you. Come on, you may even have to cry, but he ain't going to give up on you. Don't you give up on God. Because he has a plan, he has a promise, and he will fulfill. See, that, that's the good news. When he said, I'm going to do everything I said I'm going to do in your life. So it's advantageous for us to just keep on. My grandmama used to say, just keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Don't give in. No matter who walks away, don't, don't you give up. No matter who leaves you for the, don't you give up. God said your success for the mission of your life has nothing to do with the people that walk out. He said, I'm God and I'm able. And if he's able, then it's our job to trust and believe. Come on, can we give Brother B another hand? The fan, praise team. Amen. Amen. Thank God, amen, for everyone in your contribution. I want to say welcome this morning to God's Will Christian Fellowship. I'm your friend, Pastor Yusef Chandler Westbrooks. And we thank the Lord for you here in person. God bless you for pressing your way out. And to our family that's all across these United States of America that has logged in, streaming with us, we honor the Lord today for you and your virtual experience. We want you to know that the vehicle may be virtual. But the, the, the praise is real. Amen. We thank God for you pausing in your day to worship with us. So we honor the Lord today for each and every one of you. To our pastors, our ministers, elders, deacons, all of God's people in their respectable places, we do honor the Lord for you on today. We're going to continue. We know it's Palm Sunday. Amen. This is one of the greatest Sundays in, on the Christian calendar. It segues into Passion Week and it, it, it culminates in next Saturday, next Sunday is the, the, the we call it Easter but it's really called Resurrection Sunday one of the greatest days on the Christian calendar and we're excited about what God has done for us that allows us these moments and we look forward and with expectation about what he's going to do amen in the moments to come so we celebrate today but we know we're finishing up our uh, National Women's Month, National Women's Month. God bless you women. We thank God for you and we pray that we've expressed that all month long. To let you know, I know y'all need more than a month. So we're going to express it all month long about your contributions and your sacrifice that has enabled this nation along with the other nations to uh, expand, to grow. It's, it's through your bodies, it's through your sacrifice that God has repopulated the earth so we will never take for granted that you all, um, the contribution that you all have to society and mostly to the church at large because every church, not just God's will, every church is at least 80 to 90 percent women. So we thank God for your submission and your surrendering power and we pray that the fellas would take a, take a, take a page from these women 
amen, and see the sacrifice and understand the commitment that's needed, amen, to God first, amen, and then the church will benefit as a result of your sacrifice. So once again, we pay homage to our queens, and we want to lift up another queen this morning, amen. We want to stay in the book of Esther. We want you to come with us to the fourth chapter, to the fourth chapter of the very familiar book of Esther. It's right behind Nehemiah, right behind Nehemiah in Old Testament times. The book of Esther is very, very um, popular and it's familiar because the book of Esther along with the Songs of Solomon are the only two books in the Bible where you will not see the name God. So it, it appears <laughs> that his name is not in the hallowed scripture, but we can see his fingerprints all over the book of, of Esther. So don't think it's not supposed to be in the canon. It was put here to show you that you ain't got to say God. You ain't got to see God to understand he's present, he's visible, he's alive, and he's aware. Come on, stand with me to Esther 4. Esther chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 10. We're going to read a couple of verses, and I will encourage you to read this whole book. This is an awesome book, and it explains a very prominent time in the Jewish community. They now have a festival which celebrates this particular time called Purim. So when you see on your calendar the, the festival of Purim, this is what they were talking about, this particular story they're going to discuss here this morning. So Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, starting at verse 10. I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the printed text. When you find these verses, you will find these words. Again, Esther spake unto Hattach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai Esther's word. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, to answer Esther, think not of thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this, then as to bathe them, turn Mordecai this answer. Go gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will likewise, will fast likewise. So will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to that, to all that Esther had commanded him. You may be seated in the presence of God. And just for a few moments, we're going to talk from the topic. It's my time. It's my time. Come on, say that to your neighbor. Through your mask. It's my time. It's my time. Yes, and I would that you would flank me with your prayers and your amen. Real quick, let's go to God in prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, O Lord, once again for this opportunity, this privilege called preaching in which you've allowed us to position ourselves at the foot of your throne. Speak now, O God, for your servants are listening and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart prove acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's my time. I told you last week that there's five prominent people in the book of Esther. And if you want to trace the story, if you find these five people, you will see how the story unfolds. It starts out with a young lady we discussed last week named Vashti or Vashti. The ball rolls over to a man named Mordecai. The ball rolls to another man named Haman. The overall theme is about a king named Asuharis or Xerxes. But the most prominent person in the book is whom the book is entitled for. 
Her name is Esther. You remember last week we talked about Vashti, and it's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. And she got a summons from the king, but she was a queen. The summons was of concubine ascent, and he asked her to walk in front of his drunken friends who'd been partying for six months, and then they had a seven-day after party, and they'd been drinking. Uh, li- it shows the king's liberality. They had been drinking to no end, and they was partying and enjoying themselves, and he sent for the queen to come in and to wear her crown only in front of all of these drunken men. Not only was it against Persian law for a woman to be amongst drunken men, it defied who Vashti was and she knew her worth, she knew what she stood for, and she knew what was in her DNA. So she told the king no, and the king was disturbed, not at the fact that she said no, but it was because she told the king no. Remember, the king was the emperor of the world. He got everything that he wanted, and he felt some type of way because in front of all his homies, his wife told him no, and they said, man, listen, how you going to rule all of these 127 provinces and have all of this power, and your woman don't even bow down to, man, we got to do something about this, so they put out this decree that says all women must subjugate themselves to the ruling of their man. They put it in decree, which means it was a law, and any violation of the law was termination by death. So, so, so the word had spread, Vashti's influence had begun to infiltrate, and they wanted to stop the influence, so they put out this law. The Bible goes on to tell us that after that, Xerxes, once again, he, he became sober in chapter 2, and he remembered Vashti, but he remembered that his, uh, uh, his irresponsible approach had now left the queendom Absence. So he put in a, 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 a display of trying to find a new queen. The Bible says, it was, some scholars seem to suggest it took 12 months to up to three years for these women to undergo this treatment. And, you know, they took care of them, they bathed them, they, they smoothed them out, got their skin together, got their hair laid, did all of this to pamper them, to make them acceptable because he needed himself a new queen. The Bible says that all of these women went through all of this nurturing. And, and Esther, her name was Hadassah at this time. She was involved in all of the nurturing. Whenever they present her to the queen, to the king, the king saw something in Esther that he hadn't seen in the other women that he presented. He told them, stop the possession. No more. I want her. Esther was so fine, y'all. She had the favor of God on her life that elevated her to a place where she looked different than the, uh, all the women had been through the same protocols and the same tempering and the same makeup and the same hair done and nails and feet and everything was fine, but Esther had a different about her. She, she, she just looked, and the king said, listen, let's stop this possession. Let's stop this foolishness. I need her to be my next king. Bible says he rose Esther to the queen, but she did not tell them that she was of Jewish descent, so she rose to the king, and her uncle, which was Mordecai, which raised her since she was a little child. She lost her parents in the transformation from Jerusalem to Babylonia, so she lost her parents, and Mordecai took her under his wing and he began to teach her and train her and never let her forget who we really are. I don't care where you at. Don't forget who we really are. That's a message in and of itself. I ain't got time to stay there, but watch. You always got to remind your children no matter where life takes you, don't forget who we are. Whether they go down and hit rock bottom, remind them that ain't where we belong. Or they get high on the hog, remind them, come on down here because that ain't even where we belong. You may be doing good, but do not forget who we are. So Mordecai was her accountability. He was her uncle. He was her, her, her trainer, her teacher. So he always had a way of keeping her accountable. Word got back to the king that two of his, 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 his eunuchs wanted to do him harm. Mordecai found out the plot. I'm trying to show you this story so I can fix you to the end. So, so Mordecai told him what was going on. He said, king, these brothers are trying to get you. He sent word to Esther. Esther told on the two that was trying to get the king. He found out it was true. He killed the two eunuchs, all right? So, so uh, Esther's building up loyalty. Somebody say loyalty. loyalty. Esther's showing she's loyalty. Esther's showing something that even Vashti didn't show. So now she's really rising in her prominence to the king. So the Bible says that, that Haman got promoted. This was a crooked uh, 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 power. He was one of them power thirsty people. He got rose to a prominent position and he was over everybody else. He was second only to the king and the queen and Haman started filling himself. And when Haman came in, Haman was the type of person that when he showed up, he expected everybody to bow down to him. So Haman came in and the 
other eunuchs. What did they do? They got on their hands and knees and they paid homage to Haman. But Mordecai, he knew who he was and he knew that he was a Jew. And the only time they bowed down was when they turned to the east and prayed three times a day like Daniel. And Mordecai stood straight up and Haman felt some type of way about this brother who wouldn't bow down to him like everybody. It pays to be distinctive, y'all, I promise you. So, so Haman, Haman, uh, uh, Haman's in, he's feeling his, in his feelings and he goes to the king and he said, listen, there's a person in your, in your court who doesn't bow down to your laws. He lied on. He doesn't bow down to you, the king. So I think we should do something about this type of foolishness. He, not only did he ask the king to do something, the Bible seemed to suggest that he gave him an $18 million bribe to come up with this evil plot because he was so mad he didn't just want to kill Mordecai. He wanted to kill all the Jews. He said, man, we need to wipe these people out of here because if they see this dude leading and not doing what we asked him to do, then it's going to infiltrate all of these Jews that we've came over and they're working for us and it's going to cause us a problem. So here's the bribe money. Let's go ahead. You sign this decree. Give me your signet ring signature and we're going to fix this thing. And what did Xerxes do? 18 million. Xerxes put his ring on the decree and the word was out. All of the Jews is about to be terminated. Haman, feeling himself, went and built these gallows, y'all. These things where you hang people from. He went and built these gallows because he had an appointed time, an appointed day that he was going to excommunicate all of these Jews. Haman couldn't wait. He was feeling himself. He was going back and forth and the word got to Esther. Mordecai had been training her, had been teaching her for such a time as this. Watch the text. Watch the text, y'all. Because one thing that Esther came to realize was that her position had purpose. Let me slow down so you can make sure you get this. Her position had purpose. And you know, sometimes, y'all, we, 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 we guilty of thinking our degree got us the position. And whenever your education gets you the position, you forget that your position really got purpose. Sometimes God allows you in a job, in a particular area, not because you smart, not because you're the best one, but because you're the one he can trust to bring purpose. So don't ever think that God is just elevating you because you having a good seat. It's my season. Now, God may be trying to use you for a bigger picture, so you better keep your eyes on God and understand your position. That's why it ain't good just to quit up, quit a job and leave in the flesh and mad and say, I don't, I can't, I can't do it right here. God has said, get back where I put you. Because there's, there, there's purpose. I know you don't understand, and I know, I know you don't like Haman, and I know you can't stand all of the things that's going on, but I need you to get back where I put you or consult with me before you just make your brand new decision because I may have you there. <laughs> On purpose. Somebody say on purpose. Yeah, God is intentional, y'all. And a lot of times, we don't even stop to think what God is doing because we get so caught up in what's being done to us. Can't believe they treat me like I'm better than this. I deserve more than this. God is like, yes, you do. In my time, you're going to get better. But I need you to get back. I'm going to help somebody this morning. Watch, watch. So her position had purpose. I told you she had favor and she looked better than everybody else. God didn't make her that pretty just to make her pretty. God said, I want you to go because there's a plot to kill my people. And I'm going to use you and your position to get in position so you can help my plan come to fruition. I just rammed that and didn't even try. But listen, so watch, watch. So the position has purpose, y'all. And listen, you got to learn that it's my time. If it's my time, that's why you got to stay in tune with God and you got to keep your antennas tilted toward heaven because you never know what God is doing. You got to learn how to seize these moments. Why? First, you got to seize these moments, y'all, because your fate will be like the rest of the crowd. If you don't seize these moments, your fate will be like the rest of the crowd. Watch. There's a plan. There's a plot. But it's dangerous. Yeah, I told you, not only had, did, did Esther know the law, because the law said, you can't just come for the king if he don't send for you. Because the king was so self-absorbed that he only liked good news. So you had to go through an interview before you could talk to the king. So you just couldn't see the king walking and say, excuse me, king, they will kill you. Because they didn't want the king's mind to be cluttered with anything but good news. And not only was it dangerous to run up on the king without 
him send it for you. She hadn't seen the king in 30 days. 30 whole days. She ain't seen her king. She's a queen. It just shows you they don't even live together. The king is so far up, the only way you get to come in his room is he sent for you. So for some reason, the king has spent 30 days he hadn't sent for Esther. So Esther, come on women, she's feeling some type of way because her, her quote-unquote father is telling her, I need you to go and stop this plan. And Esther's like, man, listen, you know I could die if I go in there? Listen, if, if I go in there unannounced, unsent for, and he don't raise the golden scepter at me, man, you can cost me my life. Mordecai had to remind her, listen, your fate will be like the rest. If you don't take this risk, you can never expect a rise to the occasion. Come on, let me, let, can, I, can I talk to my young people right quick? I used to tell my son, this is a basketball analogy, I used to tell my son all the time, and now I'm going to echo this to my goddaughter. You're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Because there's risk that comes with being great. And there's some Christians in here who are living safe. And you ain't taking no risk. And you're scared to move. And it just may not happen. And you're considering all of these things that's encapsulating you and keeping you in a box. And God is saying, listen, I'm trying to raise you up and I'm trying to elevate you. But you got to give me something to work with. You got to take a chance. You got to take a risk. And though the bottom might fall out, I'm still God. And if you hit rock bottom, I'm still the rock at the bottom. And I'm going to lift you back up. But you ain't even gave me me a chance to show off in your life because you trying to play it. I don't know. I, I, ooh, and listen, this is how, thank you Holy Spirit, this is how cold God is. He'll put you around some people that's doing what he wants you to do so that you can sit and think to yourself, well if they can do it, God will allow you a pre-planned opposition and a time for you to sit back and see and listen. I'm of the cut. If another human is doing it, I can too. What makes me any different? If I serve God who can do anything but fail, God is saying, will you please just take the rest? But we don't know. Lord, I don't know. I'm thinking about it, but it's, Lord, have mercy. And if you don't take the risk, you ain't ever going to be expected. Mordecai reminded Esther that even though you the queen, she would not fare no better than the rest of the Jews if she didn't talk to the king, if she didn't take a risk. I know you the queen. Listen, and you living in play. Come on. They dropping grapes in your mouth. You ain't even, all you got to do is think about what you want. And somebody's at your every beck and call. Mordecai said, but listen, don't you forget. They don't even know you Jewish. So the moment the creed goes out and all the Jewish people start getting killed, you ain't going to be exempt. So you got to, you got to take her. There was danger in her silence. Danger in her Okay, okay. If you don't seize the moment, your fate gonna be like that of the crowd. Everything that happened to them gonna happen to you. And if you don't, if you don't seize the moment, y'all, God will replace you with somebody else. Uh oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, God will replace you. With, I've lived long enough to recognize that God is so powerful. God is so awesome. He'll have somebody in the bullpen. That's better than the number one starter. But you got to realize, the moment you stop being obedient to God, don't you think it's about your gift, about your talent, about your amazing charisma and the way you can galvanize the crowd. God said, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I got somebody else that's half your age that'll do better than you. And I ain't looking for talent. I'm looking for submission. God will replace you. Somebody, Mordecai, Mordecai, let's stay on the text. Mordecai motivated Esther by reminding her that God would accomplish his purposes even if, Lord, she had to sit on the sidelines. And ain't nothing more frustrating 
then you have an opportunity and don't do it. And then somebody else comes along and you got to sit there with your talented self. You got to sit there with your anointed self and stew in the fact that your disobedience disqualified you and this person may not be as talented as you but they have this thing called submission and obedience and God said listen I'd rather deal with people who are less talented and obedient than those who are uber talented but got their own agenda got their own mindset oh, Mordecai told Esther he said listen if you don't do it God gonna get it done and I just want to remind some folks. I want to remind some folks. Folk. Folk. Listen, don't you think that because you ain't doing it, it's going to stop God's movement? I got other folk. Folk we don't even know. Folk we ain't even seen. God is so tough. He has all kind of gifts housed in each and every one of us. And the moment it don't get done by this one, God has a, listen, that's what keeps pastor going, is that I know what God said, and I know what he gonna do. So whoever don't come, whoever won't do it, we ain't begging. We gonna trust God because he gonna send somebody because he's always faithful to what he says. Watch, watch. Mordecai tells him, Mordecai tells him, listen here, baby. Um, don't make God sit you down. <laughs> don't make God put you. You got to read the story so you can get the real contact. This is the uh, Chandler Westbrook contemporary version. Uh, don't you allow God to remove you because it's going to get done. God said, if it don't come through you, Mordecai said, it's going to come from, from somewhere else. It's not necessarily the giftedness of a person that prompts God's blessings. It's more often the person's, here it is, write this down, a person's willingness to move when and where God initiate. God, listen, God ain't short on talent, y'all. God ain't short on his ability to make you do stuff and then you'll get home and be like, did I just do what I think? I God is that kind of God that he will make you blind to what he's doing until you get done. And when you sit down, you'll get nervous off the fact that you just was up there doing something that you said you are never. Have you ever said, I can't, I ain't, I ain't gonna do that, God. I ain't able to do that, God. You know, I can't speak well, God. I can't hold my note. And God will put you in front of every Everybody, and you will blow people out the water and it ain't till you sit down that you realize my god is that me on that lord i thought i'd never be doing that god is looking for people who are willing to move when and where he indicates so he told esther he said listen baby i know you done rose to prominence and you living good and hound hall got a nice old retirement plan pension coming your way but if you don't do what god tell you to do you're going to have to sit and watch somebody else do what God has called. This is for somebody in here who's sitting right now on your gift. We sent out this gift with assessment test, and I seen some stuff in some people that they ain't showed yet. And listen, here's your call today. Here's your warning. I told you I was going to help you with it. Here's your warning today. God says, get where I told you to get, or I'm going to get somebody else. And this is why this is dangerous. Because, you know, sometimes my mind said it. Well, get somebody else then. <laughs> cool. Get somebody else then. <laughs> know what you asked me for anyway. Here's the danger. Here's, here's the danger. You ain't get away. Here's the danger. Because if you don't seize this moment, watch this. You can move, you can lose more than just an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mordecai told Esther, listen, baby, if you don't seize this moment, come on, you're talking about losing your crown. <laughs> you're talking about scared. You about to lose your life. Because when God has appointed you to something, that's the only reason you keep breathing. One, one more time. When God has given you something to do, that's the reason he keeps waking you up every morning because he wants you to get in the position that he, listen, I know you smart and I know everybody likes you and I know you're the most influential one in your family. Could it be that the only reason you smart and you influential in your family is because God's got something for you to do, but if you keep on not doing it, here it is. You could lose more. Just, uh, Mordecai reminded Esther that if she sat back and did nothing, she could lose more than just a chance to do the right thing. <laughs> she could lose her, her life. And listen, 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 y'all. Our big brother said it like this. Dr. King said, if you can't find something worth dying for, oh my God. you ain't fit to live. 
Ooh, say it, Doc. One more time. If you can't find something worth dying for, you're not fit to live. Come here, Jesus. Jesus said, listen, if you're trying to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, he said, I'm going to save it. So Jesus is promoting us, pushing us, prompting us to make a, take a risk. And listen, listen, y'all, it is, it is, that's one of the amazing things about uh, Palm Sunday. You know, Palm Sunday, it's the Sunday we own. And y'all remember that they, they, they had been trying to kill Jesus for some time now. But Jesus was so in control of everything that they were trying to stone him and, and seize him. And they were trying to make him king. Everybody had other stuff they wanted to do for Jesus. But Jesus understood what his father had sent him for. So they was trying to kill Jesus. And listen, Jesus knew that his time was coming. And instead of Jesus sneaking in the back way of Jerusalem, Jesus got on a coat and he came in front of everybody. He pointed the limelight on his life because he wanted the oppressor to know and everybody watching, I will do what my father called me to do, no matter the risk, no matter what you feel, how you think about it. Jesus knew he would die but he's still courageously and that's what God is asking for us he's saying listen I put you here for a reason you gotta take some risk I I have a plan it's your time stop sitting on the dock of the bay and and watching time roll away and sitting on the man Jesus said take a risk Get up off the dock of them. You don't sit there long enough. You don't waste it enough time. It's time now for you to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was not willing. He wasn't willing to miss his opportunity. And that's why we have Palm Sunday. Because Jesus wanted it to be a big thing. They were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest praise. Hosanna. He was exactly glad to see Jesus. Hosanna. Jesus was making a big fanfare because he wanted them to know. Like the. Gospel according to Bone Crusher. I ain't never scared. Jesus said, I ain't scared. I'm going to ride across in peace to show you that I'm about <laughs> my father's business. Okay, it's the last one. Last one. If, if you don't seize this moment, I don't know, could you lose an opportunity? Uh, you could miss out on your mission in life. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that I found what God called me to do. Life can be so unfulfilling when you don't know the difference from Saturday and Tuesday. Life could be so mundane and boring. Wednesday don't do nothing for you. Thursday don't do nothing for you. Friday don't get my check, but it's gone before I get it. Saturday don't do nothing. Ain't got nothing to do. I ain't got no money. My check gone from Friday. Sunday ain't even going to church. I don't feel like listening to all that stuff. I'm, every day is the same for those who don't seize. Listen, listen, listen. Mordecai, last one. Mordecai speculated that if Esther failed to act on the behalf of her people, she might miss out on God's purpose. Have you ever stopped and asked yourself, God, what's my, what's my purpose? God, listen, let me help you, because your purpose ain't always what you like to do. We know what you like to do. <laughs> but sometimes you got to ask God, Lord, what's my purpose? Because I found out in life, y'all, watch this, when you're walking in purpose, it will coincide with what you like to do. Because we serve a God who says, I'm put a yoke on your neck, but, but, but my yoke is easy. He said, my burden is light. So God has a way of making you work and enjoying the work because you work him in your purpose. You will never accomplish your mission by remaining idle. Yeah, you know, it's it's too much. Mordecai reminded Esther, listen, you got to do something. And the Bible says that that Esther put out the word. She said, okay. Because Mordecai wouldn't leave her alone. Because Mordecai kept being her accountability partner and reminding her of the reason she ascended to her position. And the Bible says that, that finally, after, after uh, breaking down all of Esther's excuses, Esther said, all right, all right. 
She said, listen, this is what I need y'all to do. She said, I need everybody to fast. I need everybody to turn down the plate for three days. I need y'all to pray. She said, and if I perish, I perish. And it's sometime in the mission that God has for your life, you got to say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if, come on, we know all the cliche, if I want something different, I got to do something different. Come on, come on. A lot of us want to lose weight, but we won't do what it takes to lose the weight. Or, here it is, we won't do it consistently enough. Oh, you'll get a season where you'll run and walk and jog and eat lettuce and drink water and, and watch what you eat and, and count calories and you'll crucify everybody around you until that season shows up where you say, you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. And you go on for yourself and you stop counting calories. Come on, you stop administering what other folk are eating and you said, I'm just going to live and be happy. But, 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 but if, if you don't, if you don't remain idle, you can accomplish something in your life. Watch this. But how, I heard your mental mechanisms clicking. But how, Pastor? How can you determine if it's the right time for you to seize your opportunity? I'm going to give you five things to consider. It ain't going to be on the screen, so you got to write them down. Y'all ready? The needs around you, the opportunities before you, the influence behind you, the success under you, and the courage within you. Go back, Pastor. Okay. The needs around you, the opportunity before you, the influences behind you, the success that's under you, and the courage that's within you. Let me give it to you one more time. The needs around you. You got to understand. Esther had to understand the needs of her people, the need that was around her, the need that was around her, and she had to sacrifice her position so that she could help others who weren't in her position. And God has placed us in position, not just so that we can sit fat, sit fat high on the hall, get all we can, can all we get, and set on our can. He said, no, baby, I gave you overflow not for you to build a bigger barn and store more. I need you to see the needs around you. There are people who can use what you throw away. There are people who can use what you claim you saving for a rainy day. God said, I'm blessing you to the point where you won't have no rainy day savings. God said, I'm taking care of you every day. So when I give you more than enough, concern yourself with the needs of the people around you. That's why I made you the queen. That's why I give you the position. That's why I elevated you not so that you can sit in there and enjoy all that the elevation gives so that you can look out and see there's needs around me and if you're giving me what I need, God, now it's my time to reciprocate what you're doing in my life and start to do that in some else's life. Quit looking for folk to pay you back. Find the need around you and sow it to somebody's life. You got all you people that owe you. You done fell out with all kind of people because God is raising up people that you can help but they didn't pay you back last time and now you missing out on why God put you where he put you because he wants you to see there are needs around you. Not only, not only are there needs around you watch it. The opportunity is before you. Woo, ain't nothing worse than get to the end of your life and saying, I wonder what would have happened if I would have. If you ever, you talking about a regretful life. Have you ever thought what might have happened? Listen, I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know, baby. Because I was right here in this position and the opportunity was before me and I had to hear God and God was saying go and I was saying no. God was saying go and I said no. God said go. I said all right, I ain't got no other choice. And I stepped out on faith, trusting God, believing God. And now as a result of my knees shaking faith back then, God has made me bold as a lion now and there is no opportunity. He can put in front of me well, I won't say I'm going to try. My wife don't always like it. But baby, I'm sure I'm going to take some risk. I'm going to try some stuff. Because I got evidence that my God is able to do anything. Anything but fail. And if you give me uh, to next week, we can sit down and have a cup of coffee. And I can tell you how God did it for me in the secular and in the real. Come on, in the spiritual, I'm sorry, and in the secular. So I can show you how taking an opportunity 
that don't look good going in. Come on, you look in and you're like, whoo, that's a lot of sacrifice. You look in, you're like, whoo, that's a lot of responsibility. You look in, you're like, whoo, that's a lot of uncertainty. And right now, the way this world is, I think I'm going to stay right here. God said, uh-uh, trust me, move forward, because you're going to be able to help some people around you. And there's an opportunity. I try to teach young people. Preparation and opportunity equals success. And the only way you're going to find success before hard work, uh, search for success before work, is in the dictionary. Because when you step, <laughs> you got to be willing to do. So, okay, so you got to have knees around you, opportunity before you, watch this, and the influencers behind you. Ooh, Esther didn't have a big crowd of folk. You never heard her talking to anybody but Mordecai. God has given you somebody who will remind you influence you. Because this world can be cruel. People can see you trying something and focus on, are you trying that too, girl? That ain't going to work. It didn't work for me. And if you don't have nobody telling you, don't listen to them. Shh, don't listen. Come on, y'all should have came Wednesday. When J. Iris was got to Jesus and listen, he seen in her the woman with the issue of blood getting her breakthrough. And the minute he turned around, the people from his house came and said, listen, don't trouble the master no more, brother. She dead. And Jesus said, be not afraid. Do you just heard what this woman with this issue said? Be not afraid. I healed her and I got you too. Let's go to your house. You need some influencers in your life that can see what God is doing in you without being jealous of you and they can push you and push you and push you until you become all that God you need influencers so she got the need around her opportunity before the influence is behind her watch it and the successes is up under experience provides practical advice God didn't deliver you just for you to get a t-shirt headband and show people, look what I accomplished. God didn't deliver you for that. Look what I did. God said, uh-uh. I did that so that you can build momentum. So that I can show you that little can become much when you put it in my hand. And if you would understand, Lord have mercy, the success that I've given you ain't just for you. It's because I got something bigger around the corner and I need you to have that same stick to it. That it's amazing how much God has done for us. And then when he faces us with a new challenge, we say stuff like, oh. Come on, man. You had a church with no members and no money in a ballroom with a rat running rampant and the Lord blessed you and he put you on top as close as you can get to heaven with no air and Lord y'all wouldn't sit down in that church with them hard metal chairs and them hollow wall and beehives growing out the root God said listen man I'm giving you success because I'm, I'm going to take you down from here and I'm going to put you in Newburgh where parking's going to be an issue you're going to have holes in your parking lot but if you stay the course and stay faithful I'm going to put you in J-Town and I'm going to give you something better than what you had but those success Success ain't just to show how good you've done. It's to remind you that when I bring a new challenge, remember what I, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Same God right now was the same God back then. He said, man, I'm moving you forward on the course. God said, I ain't just out here fronting. And you shouldn't be either. Because it ain't you, it's me. Okay, so. Those are the successes. Of, can I give you the last one? And all of that, you got to have the courage. We, come on, y'all. The French word, the French word for courage, y'all, is heart. You got to have the heart. Listen, and when you have courage, on the back of courage is a small voice that says, I ain't scared to fail. That's some of our biggest problems. We scared of what people going to say. <laughs> If it don't work, oh, look at him. Lord, I told you next week I can drink coffee again. We can sit down and talk, and I can show you how many things I tried. <laughs> don't talk to my wife first. Talk to me. I can show you how many things I tried, and it didn't work. I mean, I was serious about it. Full fled, two feet in, ten toes down, hands ready to deal with it. What we got to do, and it fell apart. But the next time... <laughs> I was back up again. My wife said, oh, Lord, this dude here. 
Baby, please, don't do it. And I jump again. Jump. Every time you look up, I'm jumping. Because I got the courage and the understanding to know if God showed it to me. Now listen, there's a message in there because God didn't bring me all of that foolishness. So you got to listen to God and hear his voice so that you don't have to fall as many times as I did. But that you will know that God is trying to do something. And there's a timing and there's a place and there's intentionality. And I came to announce to somebody today, I don't care nothing about the pandemic. It's your time. God says, step out. Try me. Show me you got courage. Show me you got faith. Show me you trust me. Don't just say you trust me. Show me you trust me and know that I can and I will deliver you in spite of how it looks. But you got to have the courage that says I just it may not work but because it don't work don't mean I'm a failure. I don't need a million yeses. I take a hundred no's for that one yes. And all you need is one yes. They might have told you no. They might have told you no. They might have told you you crazy. They might have said you can't get it. But if you can get that one yes, it can lift your spirit and lift up your head. You can put your shoulders back and say, I will bless God in everything that I do because he's proven to me that it's my time. Take a risk. How can we serve a risky God? live so safe I don't know you know my mama them my granny them ain't, ain't nobody in my family ever did this God is saying good cause I got a great great grandson of yours that needs to see you people don't know my grandmama walked away from a church her and her husband started what we know as rock of ages yeah, I didn't know they came out of Bethel. Baptist Church, Pastor Lancaster went in there and they came out of Bethel and decided to have a church in the front room. 2222 St. Louis Avenue. Later became 749. That's when I found out. They might have had somewhere else before I got here. But when I got here, we was at 749. South Preston. Moved to 819 Humbler. What I'm saying to you is their courage ended up in my bloodstream not my mama my grandmama so sometimes it may have to leave a generation but if you trust God and you know what's in your DNA and you know the kind of God you serve you'll say listen man listen we got a line full of folk who fail come on we ain't got to look hard to see failure but how many people we got <laughs> this says, yeah let's go come on I'm up for the challenge let's go yeah, yeah, it's going to be hard. It ain't going to be easy. I ain't going to sugarcoat it and tell you it's going to just fall in place. You're going to have some sleepless nights. Come on. You're going to have some voices that you're going to have to talk down or turn away from. But God is saying, if you take the risk, yeah, this is this for somebody who's, who's right now thinking, hmm, so God, should I go or should I stay without even knowing your situation? And I don't claim to be a prophet. But I know if you in here, God made you a risk taker yeah. because you worship him with a risky kind of fella <laughs> who's willing to see. Yeah. Okay, God, what we doing? Uh, it didn't work. Okay, back to square root one. But next time the opportunity comes, that last opportunity ain't going to deter me from this one. Yeah. And that's what you got to inbred yeah. in your DNA. I'm done. Winston Churchill said it like this. There comes a special moment for which the person was born that special opportunity when he seizes it to fulfill his mission, a mission for which he is uniquely qualified. In that moment, he finds greatness. It's his finest hour. And it's his or her time. God said it's time. You've been just thinking about it and and listen, you know when it's God. This is when you know when it's God. It's when you get nervous thinking about it. <laughs> when you thought, well, I wish y'all could have walked with me in 2011. The thought! I never had to do church by myself. What do you mean? Me and my wife. My son wasn't doing that then. He was on the drum. The drums were too big for him. He was trying. He was on there getting it. 
beating and the floor was slashed so the drum was slid away from him so he would be off beat a lot but we kept beating he slid up and the stand was slid and he slid before you know it he's in the back of the church beating the drums because the floor was so slick but he kept beating we kept going we kept experiencing different more and more and God said keep going Stick got broke. We didn't have enough money to get another stick. Play with one stick and a half of a broke one. Keep going. I got to do Bible study, but I know ain't nobody going to come. Keep going. God, we live on, we on top of the mountain. Parking's a problem. They're getting people's car towed away in the middle of surface. Keep going. We get out of Newburgh. We're having a good time. Man, knock on the window. We got seven cars need to be moved. People get car getting hit. They cutting out on us. Keep going. Lord, we can't afford this. Lord, that's out of our price range. You know, we only got the budget for this. God said, keep going. We found this church, everything ready made. God said, just go in there and worship. Keep going. And watch this, watch this. Celebrate. Thank you, Jesus, for this. But listen, now y'all know what y'all pastor's doing, don't you? Looking around another corner. There he is, y'all, Lord, where this man sat down somewhere. Until I die. (laughs) Keep going. Go, what else, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. For, I love it. I'll be, oh, this is beautiful. I love it, Lord, but I ain't going to. I'm going to sleep like that. Because <laughs> I know. I know who he is. And I know what he said. So even though I might be satisfied in my little heart, I'm never going to stop him from allowing me to keep. Then listen, next we're going to be riskier than this one. In the pandemic, soon we sign the deal on the church. <laughs> Boom, no members. Can't nobody come. What? What'd you say? We got to do what? So we got to worship. So now I got to, I'm back, I'm back. I'm, he took me back. And you got to come in by yourself. Sit down at your desk and film a Bible study. Then you got to come in by yourself with maybe two or three people. And you got to, listen, listen. Are you here for me? Or are you here for the crowd? Keep going. I promise you. If you would get faithful to God and commit it to whatever, don't even question what it is, just do it. Because I promise you, there's other people that he's doing something in. And if you keep going, they're going to come. Some going to leave, some going to leave. Listen, God bless you, I love you. Ain't no ill will. If you see me in the streets, do not try not to speak. I ain't mad at you. My job, keep going. Because <laughs> God told us that if you don't do it, somebody will. See, long, long time ago, I know I said I'm through, but I'm still going, but I'm still through. Listen, long time ago, I made up in my mind, this ain't your church. This ain't your church, brother. So stop taking stuff so personal. It ain't got nothing to do with you. You can preach, people will love it, and they'll never come back. You can preach, people don't love it, and they'll keep coming back. That ain't y'all, I'm just saying. The point I'm trying to make is, it don't matter what you do, you get committed to being faithful. And when you get committed to being faithful, God said, I, God said, I'll let some stuff happen just to see where you at with it. Come on, are you going to cancel? Because don't nobody show up? That's all right. Roll the tape, D, me and D. Got to go, because there's other people what some people don't think they need. Oh, but life is tricky. And everything comes full circle. And I told you this before and I'm done. My name is Yusef. Go read about a fella in Genesis 37 named Joseph. God put him in a particular place brother sold him into slavery. Potiphar's wife got him locked up. He got in prison. He spoke a word to the cupbearer and the baker. He delivered them from their situation, told them, listen, when you get out, tell the king, I don't supposed to be here. Help me, uh, help me get, 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 get out of here. They got out, they forgot all about him. Two years went by. He's still in prison, ain't done nothing. The king couldn't decipher his dreams, and none of the people on his payroll could either. And the, the, the cupbearer remembered, 
He said, I know who can help you. He said, who? He said, a fella named Joseph. King said, for real, where's he at? He's, oh, he's, uh, he's in jail. Yeah, be careful how you treat people that ain't where you at right now. Because Joseph got out. The Bible said he had an interview with Pharaoh. He gave Pharaoh a plan to help him through the pandemic. I mean, to help him through the famine. And Pharaoh said, Joseph said, yeah, that's, that's the plan you need. And, you know, you need to find a guy that can implement that plan. Pharaoh said, why well, I'm looking for a guy. <laughs> you him. He lifted Joseph. Slavery. Trumped up charges. Locked up for protesting. Come on. Uh, he gets to a position. Now he's second in command over everything. Pharaoh ain't got nothing to worry about. He said, only thing you can't have is my wife. Joseph said, cool, I already know about that. I got, the one woman wanted me and got me in trouble, so I already know about that. So the Bible says that his family came from Canaan. The people who sold him into slavery. The people who disrespected him and treated him bad. And then when they seen him, they couldn't even recognize who he was because of the favor that God had put on his life. Here's what I'm saying. Joseph had to forgive those who sold him into slavery, who got him locked up, who didn't remember him when he sold into their life. Because in order for him to be who God was calling him to be, he couldn't just take the favor without having forgiveness. And I said all that to say, the reason it's your time it's not because of the people who left you. It has nothing to do with the people who didn't believe in you. Because if you want that favor, you better hurry up and learn how to forgive. Because favor and forgiveness goes together. Because when God lifts you, the people that despise you are going to be the same people that now need you. So you have to have enough God in you not to say... <laughs> Help me out, Mike Jones. Back then, you didn't want me. <laughs> now I'm hot. You all on me. Now you can't, you can't take the Mike Jones mindset. You got to leave Mike in Texas. You can't take that mindset. You have to know that, okay, God, you put me here, and now I got this favor, and it's my time. Now I got to see who I can bless. You remember what they did to you? I got to see what I can bless. You remember what they said about you? See who I can bless. Do you know how bad they see who you can bless? Because if you want what God has for you, it's not dependent on what they said. <laughs> it's not dependent on what they did. Listen, as a matter of fact, they did you a solid. They helped you, push you into who God has called you. It's your time, child of God. It's your time. But God said you got to take a risk. You got to trust me. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be scary. And listen, let me be all the way 100 with you. It may cost you your life. But I'd rather die doing God than to live doing the world. Amen. Trust him. He ain't bring you as far. For now, come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm done for real now. Every head bowed. Thank you, oh God. It's our time. For such a time as this, you've allowed us to persevere. <laughs> You've allowed us to push. You've allowed us to arrive at this moment in spite of the risk, in spite of the fears, in spite of all the things that were stacked against us. You've given us this opportunity. Now, God, we're going, we're going to seize this moment. <laughs> we know it's you, God. We could not have dreamed this for ourselves. You position a certain group of people together. You bought us from everywhere, God. And you're fitly joining us together as one. Remove all agendas. Remove all insecurities. Let us influence each other to be better in the gifts that you placed in this place. We ready, God. Take us higher. Take us higher, take us deeper, take us further than we ever could imagine on our own. Thank you, God, and we thank you in advance for what you're about to do in this place. You put us in J-Town for a reason. 
We ready, God. Do it the way you want to do it. We surrender. We submit ourselves. We're willing to sacrifice whatever it may cost. We take the risk. It's our time. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This time we open up the doors of the church. Offer you the opportunity to come become a part of what God is doing here in this place. Once again, we, we're not a perfect church. I'm not a perfect pastor. So if you're looking for a perfect church and a perfect pastor, when you find it, don't you join. Because it's at that moment the church becomes imperfect because we're all imperfected people. But we serve a perfect God and our desire is to give him our hand and our heart so that he can lift us out of the muck and mire. It don't matter where you came from. It don't even matter what you did yesterday. Today can be the best day to the rest of your life. Come on, trust him. Give him your hand. Give him your heart. We do it a little different during COVID. You can't come down and, and sit in the front. We pray for you. But if you would lift your hand, we got people that will get your information. If you're watching virtual, put your name in the section, comment section. We'll get in contact with you. We want you to be a part of this move of God. God is about to do something great and exciting in this place. And we want you to be a part of it. If that's you, come on. Come on. Give him your hand. Give him your heart. Trust God. It's your time. It's your time. Come on.
Don't it feel good? Don't it feel good to know that there's somebody you can love and they won't never hurt you. They won't never leave you. They won't ever cross you. Come on, they won't ever give up on you. All that they know about you. That's the kind of God we serve, y'all. He says, I know everything about you, the good and the bad. But I love you so much that I won't ever give up. And that's why we, that's why we sing that song, that we love him more, more than anything. At the, end, at the end of the service, we're going to pray. Somebody asked me to pray for their family. Um, and we're going to lift up their prayer. So don't think I forgot. But, uh, if, you've, if you've given your information online, if you're considering it here in your heart, don't miss this opportunity to connect with a body of believers who understand the ins and outs of life. And our sincere desire is for every flower that God has planted in this place to blossom, to bloom. I encourage you, take the rest. Because it is definitely, definitely your time. We offer the opportunity for you to partner with us in helping to spread this gospel on our on our screen we have multiple ways that you can partner with us At the back of our sanctuary there are baskets that you can deposit your tithes and offering in at the end of service if you see fit we're not asking our visitors to sow but God's wills family I know what, what we need to do and I don't know how much more evidence we need God gave and sustain our church through the pandemic. He has caused us to be creative. And now God has pushed our ministry worldwide. And so we thank him for the way he moves. And if we would just stay attentive to the way he moves, 
man, he is, he is continuing to blow, blow our mind. So we thank you in advance for everybody that's sold, man, all of your gifts, your contributions. We are grateful for everything that you sow. And listen, I can say this without fear of contradiction. If you're sowing into the house of God, I promise you, he will. He'll give you what you need. And some of the stuff, because he's God, he'll throw in some of your wants. Because when you're faithful and take care of his house, he said he'll open up the windows of heaven. So I encourage you, man. I don't implore you. Listen, God does not need our money. I promise you. But if you decide, to try them. And I tried them for myself. And now I don't need nobody else because I trust him. And he has not failed me yet. So I encourage you, man, if you don't, if you don't tithe, if you're not a regular tither, try it. And listen, if it don't work, stop. But listen, if stuff just starts happening, <laughs> in your life <laughs> I promise you God is showing you it ain't about money it's about trust he said when you trust me with what I know is most sacred to you because we work hard for our monies God said I dare you trust me and watch me blow your head off and when he blow your head off come back and tell us come back and tell us what he, what he come on it's old bad grandma what he done did Come on back and tell us what he done did. Because I know he's going to do something. Because he wants to prove to us that he's no shorter than his word. So don't forget all of our social media's uh, handles are on the screen. Come on, go to our YouTube. Subscribe. You'll get notifications whenever new services come up. Every service is streamed. Facebook goes up to YouTube. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're on Instagram. You can keep up with our uh, going for the W if you get confused on what scriptures we own. On. You go on to Instagram and you will see uh, exactly where we are and what you need to be reading for the day. Speaking of that, we <laughs> we got seven days left, y'all. But listen, y'all, I'm I'm wearing stuff I couldn't wear before. Jeez, I might continue this go for the W thing. Man, it's working. It's working for my good. But listen, we want to encourage you. If you hadn't done it yet, it ain't too late. We got seven days left. We 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 started on Ash Wednesday and we're going all the way to. Resurrection Sunday. And listen, let me help clear you up with something. This ain't a Catholic thing, okay? This ain't just what the Catholics do. This has no Catholicism in it. This is what the Jews did to pay homage to their Jesus, to their Messiah. So don't, don't think because we're not Catholic, we don't observe Lent. It's not Catholic. It's Christian. So we're, we're going for the W. We got seven days left. We're just asking that you would read Psalms when you wake up. Uh, Psalms when you wake up all day long you will stay constantly in prayer the Jews prayed at least three days three times a day so we're just asking that in your day that you would incorporate some prayer and some silent times and quiet time with God and that you would just drink <laughs> that you would drink only water listen y'all we, we've been on it for what 39 days now if you would drink on I done fell in love with water if you just drink only water I, I'm still gonna go back and get my get my coffee but that might be all about it though I think I'm gonna stay on this water because it's pretty good so we, we're just encouraging you put down the pops just for a week you only got seven days left can you come with me no pop nothing else but water that's all you can drink water just for seven days, just for seven days left. Then we headed towards our W, so we, we word in the morning with, with psalms. We're, we're praying and worshiping God all day long because worship ain't, ain't, ain't what we do. Worship is, is who we are. So wherever life puts you, come on, if you need a moment, you can go in the bathroom, close the door, uh, sit down, act like you're doing something you ain't doing, stretch your hand to thee, no other help I know if thou would draw thyself from thee. Where shall I go? So you don't need to be in a specific place to worship. So let's continue in our worship, drinking, our water. Get your little walk in. You know what I'm saying? If you usually drive to the store, just walk down there one day. Just get your, get your little walk in, get on the treadmill, and then before you go to bed, get you some wisdom. Right now we're in Ecclesiastes. We're in Ecclesiastes. We're in Red Proverbs. We're in Ecclesiastes. We're going to run out of Ecclesiastes too. We're going to go on over. 
to the songs of Solomon because he was known in the Bible to be the wisest person, the most wisest person to ever live. When he asked, when God asked him what he wanted, he didn't ask for money, he didn't ask for power, he didn't ask for prestige, he asked for wisdom. So he's known to be the most wisest person in the Bible. So we're reading right now, we're in Ecclesiastes, and we'll be going over into the Song of Solomon once these are complete. So that's our going for the W, man. We encourage you all to come on, uh, come on with us. Don't forget, every Tuesday morning, we have our prayer line open, 8 o'clock. You can call in that number, press that access code. And if you have any special prayer requests, you can lift them up. If you don't, you can just listen in and touch and agree with us as we pray for other people. So we offer you that opportunity as well. Don't forget, every Tuesday, I mean every Wednesday at 6, Sunday at 10 is our intercessory prayer time. We come in the sanctuary, we pray, which precedes our worship experience because we want to usher in the presence of God at all costs and every time we get together. So we ask you to come on in, pray, and help us get the spirit in so the word can go forth. And Wednesday night, we're in person. We are here live on Facebook, but we're in person, 7 o'clock every Wednesday night for our hump day healing and to finish out our Wednesday night to finish out our women history month is none other than our first our own very own first lady amen she'll be speaking on this Wednesday amen I tried to cover all the women and she still found one so we got her this Wednesday amen she's gonna get her own woman this Wednesday and she's gonna uh, bring forth that fruitful word don't forget our church survey we ask that everyone would fill out that survey please forward it to our church email so that we can definitely make sure that everybody is in their proper place operating in their gifts now listen don't let the survey scare you if it says the shepherding or something I'm not gonna get you to pastor I'm not gonna make you do something that you know I don't know why they trying to get me I'm not we just trying to see where you're strong at so that we can get you in that area to help the church because all of us have something to give and if we're all in the same vein doing what God has called us to do it's better and it optimizes all of the gifts that we have here now we have our women history month fact being presented by none other than doctor Dana Singletary. Come on, let's give her a hand as she comes. Take the risk. What he said. I won't be before you long, I promise. So our Black History uh, women's fact is coming from, I'm going to be acknowledging Dr. Rebecca Crumpler. So in history, you don't find a whole lot about her. Um, she kind of went hidden, and I don't know why, so I had to dig a little bit about her. But Dr. Rebecca Lee uh, Crumpler was born in Delaware on February the 8th of 1831. She was raised in Pennsylvania by her aunt, who was known as a caretaker for the sick. A bright child, Crumpler moved to Massachusetts and attended a private school. It's called the West Newton English Classic School. She was inspired by her aunt. She moved there um, to Charleston to pursue a career in nursing. As a nurse, she was encouraged by different physicians to work with and apply to a medical school to serve them as she saw fit. Several of them wrote letters for her recommendation. She was accepted into the New England Female Medical College in 1860. She was forced to relocate to Richmond, Virginia for a short period of time when the Civil War broke out. She moved back to Boston to continue her studies in medicine only to find that her scholarship had been revoked. She refused to give up, so she won the Wade Scholarship which was a fund that was established by an activist called Benjamin Wade. The New England Female Medical School faced much backlash from the medical community for accepting a woman. So men physicians complained that women lacked the physical strength to practice medicine in the field which was inappropriate for women because we were too sensitive and delicate. So in 1860, when Crumpler began medical school, only 300 out of 54,000 physicians in the, in the United States were women and none were black. 
In 1864, as the Civil War raged on, Rebecca Lee Crumpler began the she became the first African American woman to earn her medical degree, degree in the United States. After obtaining her degree, she married Arthur Crumpler, and they both moved to Richmond, Virginia, to work in the Freedmen's Bureau. And if you don't know what the Freedmen's Bureau is, that was built in 1865 to help repair Civil War communities that were torn down. It provided food and housing and medical service to thousands of recent freed slaves who were routinely denied access to their services by white physicians. While she was working at the Bureau, Ms. Dr. Crumpler endured extreme harsh treatment in the form of racism and sexism from her former physicians. Some administrations at the Bureau would not grant her hospital privileges and some of the pharmacists would not honor her prescriptions. Nevertheless, in her book, she states that working at the Bureau provided her with an ample opportunity to become acquainted with diseases of women and children, which became her passion. So she really became like an OBGYN woman. So in 1869, Dr. Crumpler and her husband returned to Boston and she opened up her own practice. She served mostly the black families and children. She did this without accepting any payment. Talk about serving, that was a serve right there. Um, her and her husband moved to Hyde Park, which was a neighborhood in Boston. She wrote a book in 1833. It was the first medical health prevention guidance that contained themes of information that emphasized the, a variety of topics, including how to wash and dress a newborn, how to nurture a newborn, and how to breastfeed a newborn. She even talked about high risk associated with chewing tobacco and smoking tobacco, as well as intaking alcohol, such as brandy and gin. And if we didn't know back then, that's what they used to numb for pain medicine. She also pointed out that it was a mistake for us to administrate brandy and gin and other alcohol and narcotic supplements to girls to relieve pain. Dr. Crumpler passed away in March the 9th of 1895. She was buried at Fairville Cemetery near her home in Boston. She was in a unmarked grave. In February of 2020, almost 125 years after her death, her friends of Highland Park Library discovered that she was in an unmarked grave and they raised enough money to wow. give her a proper tombstone. That's a blessing. So I say to say all that, um, to my unbeknown, Rebecca paved the way for this little black girl. Um, as we all know, our life said, my life was hard. My life was rough. Uh, Burley graduated high school. It was a struggle, um, but I made it through working odds and end jobs. My mother encouraged me to do the best that I could. My grandmother encouraged me to do the best that I could. I wanted to be a nurse, didn't know how to do that. Um, God sent me a man, Dimitri. I love him. And so my passion was always nursing, nursing, caring and serving the people. So he encouraged me to do what I needed to do. So I took the risk. And so I thank God for him. So today, as we celebrate um, our Black Women's Month and every day, I challenge each of you to reflect on the life of those that came before you as we are because they were. Yeah. Be blessed. Yeah. We are amongst black history. Do y'all see that on the screen? I don't know if she wanted to say it, but her husband put it up, so I'm gonna say it. Dr. Singletary and those other three ladies, the one on the left, my left, is Dee's cousin, Miss Kelly Singletary Cunningham, and they're opening their own practice in the West End, in the West End, in the West End of Louisville. And only God knows 
how sorely needed it is in our West End. So keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, because I want us to support these awesome women who are making black history right before our eyes. Let's give them another hand, y'all. HMPS, Internal Medicine of West Louisville. I know some of it, but I don't know it all, so I ain't gonna say it wrong. So y'all talk to Dana, and she'll tell y'all a little bit more about what God is doing um, in her life. And we thank God for you taking the risk. It's risky. And that just shows y'all, y'all are amongst people who are gonna take a risk. Because we trust God. We ain't special. We ain't nothing great about us, but we trust God. And God will make the difference every time you step out on faith in him. And the needs of others will be, will be taken care of. So we thank God for that beautiful uh, Women History Month. And it's funny how it coincided right with what God is doing in, um, in her life. So we thank God for that opportunity. Once again, happy Palm Sunday, y'all. Reflect this week. Just find some time to sit back and thank God for the awesome display of sacrifice. This week represents his time. It was his time to go. And can you imagine walking toward death and all of the nerves and the anxiety? Remember, y'all, he was fully God, but he was still fully human. So all of the nerves and the anxieties and the things that that came up on him as he approached his final destination. And he did it all for us. So take some time this week to tell God thank you, to show him that uh, we appreciate and we're grateful for what he he done. Amen. Our hearts and minds are clear. Come on, we're going to pray before we have our benediction. Thank you, oh God, once again for your grace and mercy. God, we thank you for everything that has taken place in your house today. God, we know that we're better as a result of the experience that you've allowed us to have, the encounter that you've engrafted us into. God, we thank you for this moment. And Lord, we pray that something was said, sung or prayed that would strengthen our relationship with you, that we would step out on faith and take the risk that you're calling and that you prepare for each and every one of our lives. God, you've heard the prayer requests for our family members, those who um, are dealing with the traumatic trauma of the pandemic and the things, all the things that come with it, God, the anxieties, the the vaccination decisions, all of the things that are taking place right now in the world, God, that has a way of, of twisting and turning us internally. God, we just asking for peace, for clarity. Lord God, that we'll make the decisions that pleases you. God, touch each and every one of us as we strive to get closer to you in our daily walk, God. There is no perfect way, God, but to help us find our way, God. Whatever way you prepared for us, let us be comfortable in the skin that we're in and that we'll be the best version of us that we can be because we know that you've etched in our very fabric your eternal image. And as a result, God, we're fearfully and wonderfully made and you broke the mold when you made us, God. You didn't have to duplicate because you're so much God. So we thank you for each and every gift, each and every person that's pressed their way, those who have watched streaming live. You've heard the prayer request for the family who wants to be prayed for, the, the sick and the shut-in who are being healed and delivered for those, Lord God, who are dealing with loss and trauma on this week, for the bereaved family, for Kara, for um, bless her and comfort her and keep her, God, as she laid her beautiful sister to rest yesterday. Those that have lost loved ones, on this week. Touch God in the only way that you can. God, we all have needs. Some need you for this. Some need you for that. Some need you for one thing. Some need you for another. But the common denominator is that we all need you in our own way. So touch us. Keep us. Touch us. Keep us. Clothe us. And keep us in our right mind. God, as we uh, come to the final portion of our service, we want to say thank you for all that you've done. We ask you to give us traveling grace as we depart from this place, but never, ever from your presence. Allow us to make it safely to our homes to find them the same way that we left them. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we need it to rest 
to rule, to abide with us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. All of God's people said together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, family. Y'all have a, a blessed week. Don't forget, this next Sunday will be our Easter egg hunt. We ask you to bring all the babies out. Next Sunday after service, we will have, Zion's excited, we will have our Easter egg hunt. Amen. So be blessed. Have a great week. We love you. We'll see you all next time.